Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bara habata fillah I wanted to start um, a new series of lessons about something which has uh, great importance for us so that we understand some general important aspects of our religion regarding to the minhaj and minhaj that refers to uh, methodology the methodology of how you understand Islam because there are many groups and sects as you've heard uh, and jama'at who have different understandings of Islam and so it's very important for us to have the tools to be able to distinguish haq wa batil, to distinguish between the truth and falsehood. And the only way that you will be able to understand the truth from the falsehood is by knowledge, Islamic knowledge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the people who fear Him the most are the ulama because they have taqwa that if they have knowledge and they practice that knowledge they have taqwa okay it's not just memorizing books buying books memorizing matun half of the quran we know many people will law understand and people throughout history even the hypocrites who memorized hypocrites were in the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and around the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they uh, didn't believe in Islam. You know, inside their hearts, they disbelieved in Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man bi fi deen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion. So it's very important to have fiqh fi deen because that gives you the understanding of how to practice your Islam and how to distinguish between the truth and falsehood. And like we studied La ilaha illallah, the conditions for La ilaha illallah, all of that we studied it. Why? Because it required an end. In order to know those things, to know the conditions for La ilaha illallah, to be able to practice it, to be able to implement it in your life and in your heart, you had to have knowledge, you have to have ilm. You have to have ilm of who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and how to worship Him properly. So likewise, we need knowledge of the correct menhaj, the correct methodology. Methodology means like the way that you understand something, the way you do something, the way you implement something. And Minhaj, the scholars, when they talk about the religion, uh, some of the scholars in the contemporary times, contemporary meaning this, in this, this, these times, uh, there's a, a, a sheikh, a famous sheikh, his name was Sheikh Ahmed al-Najmi. And he mentioned that Minhaj was the path or tariqa to dawa. It's the way that you give dawa. Because this is what distinguishes the dawa of Ahlul Sunnah from dawa of other groups like Akhwan al Muslimin, which is a group that started in Egypt from someone named Hassan al Banna. And we're not going to get into all of those details, but I just want us to have an idea of, of what it means to say you're Salafi. That's what I want us. This whole treaties we're going to study and it's a compilation it's called the ascription to the Salafi Minhaj and it was compiled and translated from our brother Abbas Abu Yahya and he's a, a brother that uh, a graduate of the Medina faculty of Hadith uh, from a long time ago uh, and he lives in Jeddah and anyhow he compiled this treatise so we're going to go through this treatise and we're not going to stick tightly to the treaties, meaning we're going to read what he has to say, but we're going to mention some other uh, benefits so that way we actually study it. We're not here just to read, but we're here to kind of study and gain some benefit. So this is a great benefit that he put together. So we want to get an idea uh, about what it means to be Salafi. What, why do people say Salafi? Where does that come from? So we need to know. And so he, he compiled this, and it's uh, you can find it on abdurrahman.org and also probably on another website called mirath.net. Uh, uh, anyhow, we're going to go through this, and hopefully it will be of some benefit. So he begins 
the treaties talking about the evidences from the Quran and then he mentions about who the Salaf were, you know, what is it, and the scholars in the past and present that use this terminology Salaf, uh, the linguistic meaning, ascribing to the minhaj of the Salaf, what does that mean when you say you're Salafi or, or do you have to say you're Salafi? These kind of issues we're going to talk about uh, and try to give it as best, uh, as much justice as we can. And uh, in this regard, so he also mentions that the linguistic meaning and to ascribing the minhaj of the Salaf, the necessity of the title Salafiyah to distinguish from Ahl Bid'ah, okay, that to call yourself Salafi, we're going to talk about that with some details. Uh, and also that by saying one is Salafi, is that praising oneself? We're going to talk about several issues, so let's get into the treaties so that way we don't make it too long. So he began, he said, from the Noble Quran, as far as meaning from the Quran, what is the proof? of this of of the salaf of of having love for the salaf or that there was a salaf or what 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 is it so he mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem musabaqun al-awwalun min al-muhajirin wal-ansar walladhina atabuhum bi ihsan radiyallahu anhum wa radu anhu wa addalahum jannatin tajri tahtiha al-anhar khalidina fiha abada dhalik al-fawz al-'adhim he said uh, and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And the first to embrace Islam of the Muhajireen. The Muhajireen were the people who left Mecca to come to Medina. Those Sahaba, radiyallahu ta'ala, and Majma'een. And the Ansar. The Ansar were the people of Medina. Uh, and those al Medina who helped and gave aid to the Muhajireen, those people who made Hijra. And also those who followed them exactly in faith. Allah is well pleased with them as they are well pleased with him. He has prepared for them gardens underneath which rivers flow, uh, meaning paradise to dwell therein forever. That is the supreme success. So from that ayat, from that verse, we learn that the supreme success, of course, is Jannah. And that we learn the fadl and the greatness of the Sahaba, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, because this ayat was talking about the Sahaba, وَصَابَكُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمَهَاجِرِينَ وَالْإِنصَارِ the Muhajirin wal Ansar were all Sahaba, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. And so it shows their benefit. And that they make up the Salaf. The Sahaba are the Ras, they're the beginning of the Salaf. Because the Salaf, it refers to, as an Islamic term, as we're going to get into, the first three generations. How many generations? Three. The first three generations makes up what we call the Salaf. Okay? Uh, Imam uh, Nasir al-Din al-Albani was a great Imam in this time, uh, and he died, Allah yarhamahu. He said, indeed, this noble ayah, so he's talking about this, court, this verse we just mentioned, is the foundation from where it is necessary for every Muslim to spring forward from to get to know the da'wah, meaning the way we give da'wah, which some of the scholars past and present have defined as da'wah to salafiyah. The da'wah, da'wah to salafiyah, meaning the da'wah of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Whoever truly wants to learn, who wants to return to the book and the sunnah, then it is necessary for that person to return to what the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were upon and the tabi'een, the successors, and the successors of the tabi'een. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, uh, and whoever opposes the messenger after guidance has become clear to him and follows other than the way of the believers, he will give him what he has taken and drive him into the hell and an evil destination it is. Meaning if you go away from that path, the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah, the way of Ahl Sunnah, the way the da'wah to Salafiyya, the way of the Sahaba, the, the, the tabi'een, wa tabi'een, then you've went away from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed. Because that is the way to know and understand your Islam. That's how you practice your Islam. You your, our aqidah, our creed, comes from how the Sahaba understood Islam and the tabi'een, wa tabi'een. 
and our methodology of giving da'wah comes from the Sahaba, with Tabi'in, with Tabi'a Tabi'in, those first three generations, and how they understood Islam and those who followed them in righteousness. So when we say the Salaf, we're talking about those first three generations. We are not the Salaf. The Salaf is the first three generations of Islam that, that you know, practice the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu meaning the Sahaba, Tabi'in, with Tabi'a Tabi'in. Imam al-Albani, he said, commented, he said, anybody who intends to be from Firqa Tanajia, meaning the same sect, then it is necessary for that person to ascribe himself to the actions of what these people were upon, the companions and the Tabi'in, and they are the Salaf al-Saleh, whom we know. So the Salaf al-Saleh, meaning the Sahaba, Tabi'in, with Tabi'a Tabi'in. This issue, this issue, which is the obligation of following the Salaf al-Saleh, is not innovated. It's not an innovated new matter, but rather this is an obligatory matter which has been indicated to, rather it has been mentioned clearly, for example, in the statement of Allah, Tabarak wa ta'ala, and whoever opposes the messenger after guidance has become clear to him and follows other than the way of the believers. Because this is the way of, this is a sabil of mu'mineen, this is the way of Ahli Iman, the way of the believers. We will give him what he has taken and drive him into hell, and evil it is as a destination. So is it okay to take another path other than the believers? No. Is it okay to take another minhaj? What about if we take another minhaj? There's a group called Jamaat Tablik. We can follow what they're doing and the way they give da'wah. Is that okay? What about Akhwan and Muslimin? They're a political group. Can we follow the way they understand Islam and the way they, their, their form of da'wah of being in political parliaments and, and, um, and, and calling to... Uh, you know, or, or some of the other groups that say, hey, we need to establish a khalifa, this should be our priority, and they don't focus on ibadah, they don't focus on dawah. Can we take that? Maybe they have a shortcut. Absolutely not. We take the sabil of mu'minin, and we're stuck on that sabil, and that is the sabil of success. Indeed, Allah mentioned in this ayah a severe warning against opposing the Messenger وسلم, and contending with him. Then Allah linked that by saying, and follows other than the way of the believers. Meaning that if you go away from the minhaj of the Salaf, you're following other than the way of Ahlul Islam, Ahlul Iman, Ahlul Sunnah. And there is no doubt that the believers here are those with whom Allah warns the people from amongst the Muslims from opposing the path of the believers. There is no doubt that the believers are those whom are mentioned in the previous ayah from the Muhajirin and Ansar and those who followed them in righteousness. Indeed, Allah was pleased with them and they were pleased with their Lord. That path of the believers is the scale and measurement which distinguishes between the Muslim who ascribes himself by speech to the book in the Sunnah and then perhaps he opposes the book in the Sunnah by not returning to that perfection which prevents opposing the book and the sunnah, and that is none other than adhering to what the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were upon. So here, Imam al-Albani is just letting us know that there are many people who claim to be from Ahl sunnah and many people who claim to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But, the scholars mention a very important point. They mention al-ibra bi haqa'iq laysa bi musammiyat, which means that the proof of something is in its reality, not in its name. It's not in the name. So if I say that I'm Salafi, but my actions and my methodology for under, uh, practicing Islam and my creed, my Aqidah is different from the Minhaj of the Salaf, then I can't possibly be truly Salafi. Or else I've got a mistake in my Salafiya. Okay, if, if my asul, if my general methodology is that of the Salaf, but the point being is that to avoid false claims, that you want to practice Islam and try to understand Islam, how the early scholars understood Islam, they are Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, they are the Salaf al Saleh, they begin with the Sahaba because they're the asl, the asl of the Jama'ah. And The Salaf al-Saleh includes the first three generations with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam testified regarding their goodness in a hadith whose authenticity is agreed upon. Rather, this hadith 
has reached the level of mutawatir uh, uh, due to its many chains in the Sahih of Muslim and other than them from a great deal of the companions. The Prophet Sallallahu said, خَيْرًا نَسْقَرْنِي ثُمَّ لَذِينَ يَلُونُهُمْ ثُمَّ لَذِينَ يَلُونُهُمْ ثُمَّ لَذِينَ يَلُونُهُمْ The Prophet Sallallahu said, The best people are my generation. Then those who come after them, then those who come after them. So that is the evidence that you have to follow the Salaf. And that is the evidence that the Salaf are the first three generations. And that is also evidence that they are the best. Why? How do we know they're the best? The Prophet said, the best people are my generation. Then those who come after them, then those who come after them. They're the best. They're the best if you want to understand your Islam and practice your Islam. They were the closest to the Prophet wasallam. They were the uh, ones who who codified the creed or solidified the creed of Ahl Sunnah and the Minhaj and methodology of Ahl uh, Ahl Sunnah. How to understand it? They wrote those early books, those latter generations, the Tabi'in, it's about Tabi'in, uh, it's about Tabi'in, and those after them. They're the ones who put it together so we could have it in book form so we could continue to go back, of course, to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Kitabillah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the methodology, how to understand Islam like the Salaf. Uh, so then, one of the great Imams, Al-Qalshani -Qal said, the Salaf of Salih were the first generations deeply rooted upon knowledge, guided with the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his sunnah, preservers of the sunnah. Allah Ta'ala chose them for the companionship of his prophet. Allah selected them to establish his deen and was pleased with them to be the imams of the ummah. And they rightly fought jihad in the path of Allah. They exerted themselves in advising the ummah and benefiting them and they sacrificed themselves for the pleasure of Allah. So that is the, that's the, the way of the Sabilis Mu'mineen, Sabilis Salaf Asali, that the Sahaba, they sacrificed and they preserved Islam. How do we have the Quran? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose men, Hufad, the Sahaba, compiled it into the Mus'haf. Okay? The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We recite it. People around the world memorize it. And it was compiled by the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala ajma'in. And it was preserved on the tongues of the Salaf and those who came after him and the Muslims in general all throughout generations up until now. But that was because they sacrificed, they strove, they fought, they sought knowledge, and they strove for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve the deen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised them in his book by saying, Muhammad Rasulullah, وَالَّذِينَ مَعْهُ أَشَدَّا عَلَى كُفَّارُ رُحَمَا بَيْنَهُمْ Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And those who, with him, those who are with him are forceful against the disbelievers, merciful amongst themselves. Those are the sifat of the mu'mineen. Those are the, the characteristics of the believers. They should be merciful with one another, kind with one another, helping one another. This is the minhaj of the salaf as -salih. And Allah the uh, Almighty said, uh, for the poor immigrants who were expelled from their homes and their properties, seeking bounty from Allah and His approval and supporting Allah and His Messenger, there is also a share. Those are the truthful. Okay? So the fuqara, the, 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 the muhajireen, al fuqara al muhajireen, al ladina akhruju, uh, akhruju min diyarihim. They, they left their homes. They made hijra for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they sacrificed their wealth and their property and their lives in order to preserve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen. And we have Allah's deen because of their sacrifice and because of the ulama's sacrifice of writing and studying and teaching and their students who wrote the books and, and recorded their books. And that's how we have, that's why we still have those sources to go back to. And that's the minhaj of the salaf. That is the pr preservation of Islam. Allah the Almighty mentioned the Muhajireen and Ansar in the ayah. Then he praised their followers and he was pleased with those who came after them for following them. Meaning if you follow those early generations, you follow the, the way of the Sahaba, you'll have success. And Allah promised those who opposed the Salaf and those who followed other than them their way with punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and whoever opposes the messenger after guidance has become 
clear to him and follows other than the way of the believers, we will give him what he has taken and drive him into hell, and evil it is as a destination. Therefore it is obligatory to follow them in what in which they narrated, to follow their footsteps, in which they acted upon, and seeking forgiveness for them, Allah Ta'ala said, and those who came after them say, Our Lord, forgive us and our brethren who have preceded us in faith, and put not in our hearts any hatred against those who have believed. Our Lord, you are indeed full of kindness, most merciful. وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِيَخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ صَبَقُونَ بِالْإِيمَانِ وَلَا تَجَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلٍ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَعُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ so That's what that ayat means. That they sought forgiveness. And we want to be of them. We want to be of those people who seek forgiveness and say, you know, Rahimahullah, when we hear these great imams, when we hear the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, we want to uh, make dua for them, that Allah forgives them, and that Allah has mercy upon them, because they preserve the religion, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that that's a characteristic of the believers, is that they say, and those who came after them say, our Lord, forgive us, and our brethren who have preceded us in faith. That's a, a characteristic of Ahli man. So make forgive, seek forgiveness uh, for the mu'mineen. Uh, and we'll, we'll try to shorten it. Uh, As-Safarani, a great imam, he died in 1188 uh, 1, Hijrah. said, The meaning of the madhab of the Salaf is that which the noble companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, were upon and the eminent ones from the tabi'een who followed the companions in goodness and those that followed them, the imams of the deen, from those who were testified as being imams. Their great status was known from the deen and the people have accepted their speech generation after generation without them having been accused of bid'ah. Ah, the sunnah is far from bid'ah. The imams of the sunnah were far from bid'ah or having become famous with a title which is not acceptable. And I'm going to mention these early groups. He said the likes of the Khawarij, Ruwafid, Qadariya, Murjia, uh, Jabariya, Jahamiya, uh, Mu'tazila, Karamiya, and those similar to them. We're not going to go into those old sects because I don't want you guys to be overbared over with these uh these groups and sects, but I just want you to know that there was many groups that broke away. Uh, they started some of them in the time of the Sahaba, you had a group called the Khawarij, who used to make takfir, or say other Muslims were, were kafar. And we still have them today. This is what ISIS, Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab, uh, Al-Qaeda, all these groups, they are inheritors of the way of the Khawarij, the original group who used to make takfir of the Sahaba and they fought the Sahaba. These guys, they make takfir of the Muslim leaders and takfir of anybody who disagrees with them. So they say you're, you're a kafir because you're not with them. You're not fighting in Syria with them. You're not joining, making bay'ah to their imam. This is uh, falsehood and bid'ah. But it just goes to show you what all these groups that go away from the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, that they deviate and distort Islam, but Allah deals with them. Uh, and we will we'll stop there, and of course we have so many details, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.